So we almost covered this exchange last week because it was so contentious and unpleasant, but in the end, ugh, have had enough of Don Lemon, and so has CNN, yeah. apparently. Um, so you went on CNN because you've said very openly you'll go on anywhere. You're running for president. You'll talk to anybody. And it didn't go particularly well. Here's a little bit about you, challenge uh, of Don challenging you on your appearance at the NRA, and Don Lemon takes issue with your opinions on this issue because you're not a black man. You said something about American history and race, and I guess you're not allowed to opine on that unless you have black skin, according to Don Lemon. Here was a bit of that. Your telling of history is wrong. Your, what, what, you're what part thinking, of the history was wrong? What, yeah. what, what, what part of the history, history was wrong? That the Civil War was fought. You're making people think that the Civil War was fought for black people, only for black people to get guns and for black people to the have The Civil War was fought for rights. black people in this country to get freedoms, a noble mission. Black people secured their freedoms after the Civil War. It is a historical fact, Don. Just study it. Only after their Second Amendment rights have, were secured. You are discounting uh, uh, Reconstruction. You're discounting a whole host of things that happened after the Civil War when it comes to African Americans, including the whole reason that the Civil Rights Movement happened is because black people did not secure their freedoms after the Civil War, and, and that things turned around. People would, tried to change the freedoms that were supposed to happen. And you know how they the got it? They got their Second Amendment rights, and they actually got the NRA played a big role in that. But today, down the, the final, NRA did the, not play a well, big role in that. Absolutely, they trained black Americans how to use firearms. That, that's a lie. That's but, not. The NRA did not play a big role. This in is that. just historical fact, it's, it's but not the, historical the, fact. The, the, we didn't even include the best part where he basically says, you know, he he's he basically suggests he has a higher claim to the argument uh, because of skin color and and went on to diminish you. I don't know what kind of race you are. I don't know you, what you're back. I mean, it was actually really offensive the way he ended that interview with you. And um, then his colleague came on. Actually, we have this cut too. His colleague came on to try to give you a nice goodbye. And that upset him too. Here's more. The part that I find insulting fact. is when you say today black Americans don't have those rights after we have the gone through that civil rights revolution in this country. You are sitting here telling an African American about the rights and what you find insulting about the, the, the way I live, the skin I live in every day. Here's and where I you and know I have the a different point of view. that black and white that black people don't have in this he, country here, and that black people do have. Well, here's country. where you and I have a different point of view. I think we should be able to express our views regardless of the color of our skin. We should have this debate I'm not saying you without me regarding views, you as a black man, but me regarding you as a fellow citizen. You're That's sitting what I think here, we whatever ethnicity you are, explaining to me whatever ethnicity about I'm, what it's like to be black Whatever America. ethnicity I'm I am, sorry. I'll tell you what I am. I'm an Indian American. I'm proud of it. But I think we should have this debate. Black, white, doesn't matter. I think we should have this on debate. On the content of the ideas. You do it, you should do it in an honest way and in a I fair way. And what you're doing is not an honest and fair way. Okay? It, with, but we with, appreciate you coming on. With Thank due respect, Don, I look Thank forward to continuing much. that conversation. We'll Thank you. the conversation. Thank you. so much. Thank you, Pop. That you were explaining what it's like to be black in America. That's not what happened. You were not trying to speak on behalf of black people. You were talking about America's history. And the reason I go through that exercise, Vivek, is they are there are several reports out today that that was the last straw for CNN management. If you watch the longer clip um, go on, you will see Poppy Harlow trying to give you a nice goodbye, saying, we'll talk about China the next time you come on. We'll get more into depth into your policies. And Don Lemon clearly wanted to move right on saying, okay, and goodbye, it's, it's over, you know, move on. So what do you make of the fact that you may have had a, a role in CNN's ultimate decision to get rid of him? I, I think I did. And I think that that's a net positive. Look, I actually want to be really clear about this. It all comes down to what the mission of your organization is. If CNN's mission is to advance a woke progressive orthodoxy, Don Lemon is a perfectly fine host to have on air to cut off guests to tell people they can't speak based on the color of their skin, because that does represent a worldview that exists in the country. So if that's aligned with your mission as an organization, that's a perfectly sensible decision to keep that person. But what Chris Licht, the new CEO of CNN, who I've met, who I've had an open exchange and dialogue with, you know, number of number of weeks or months ago, if he means what he says, and it sounds like he does, that they want to be moved towards being a more open platform for diverse views, then I don't think that type of host actually makes sense in that organization. So to mm -hmm. me, it's not just about cancel culture in the other direction and saying that, hey, Don Lemon, it's a good thing he's fired. The question is, what's your purpose as an organization? And if CNN's purpose is to air multiple different perspectives on air, then I think that you can't have TV hosts who tell guests, whoever they are, that they can't speak or express an idea about post-Civil War reconstruction history in America without thinking about what their skin color or race is first. 
The good thing right. about me making is I didn't take particular offense to that exchange. I actually found it really useful. I'm glad we did it. It was a little bit awkward to be on set in the Larry David sense of awkward, but that's okay. I can, I can handle that. That's not a problem for me. I think it's actually really important that we surface some of these dogmas and unspoken expectations that have otherwise been simmering beneath the surface of American discourse. I'm all in favor of actually speaking those hard truths. Let those boil over. I think we need to do that as part of our let's just say, national self-therapy to get to a place where it's not the way that other guests might have approached it to say that, well, because Don Lemon is black and we're talking about a sensitive issue relating to the history of African-Americans in this country, I'm going to tread around that differently. I did not. I spoke to Don right. Lemon the same way I would have if he were white or any other race. It doesn't matter. But, but what was amazing was he had the nerve to call you out on that as though yeah. it were improper, that you, as a brown-skinned man, didn't have a working knowledge of U.S. history when it comes to American uh, Black people enough to opine on it while sitting across from a Black man. I mean, that there was some sort of racial hierarchy that would have required you to defer to his opinions about America's history, about historical fact. So that is what the theory of intersectionality, as you well know, is all about. There's a hierarchy of whether you're an oppressor or whether you're oppressed. And if you're lower on that hierarchy, according to that set of rules, you have to either step up and stand up and speak or step back, as they say in their language of the woke movement, to step back and not speak to give the person of the lower rung on that ladder the chance to speak. I reject that worldview. I think we're all co-equal citizens. Everyone's voice and vote counts equally in the open debate and marketplace of ideas. But in the case of Don Lemon, I was on set with him, Megan. I can tell you what I actually saw happening was that his head exploded a little bit when there were two conflicting ideas that I brought to the fore. And I didn't want to talk about the NRA speech particularly. They're the ones who brought it up. They put an excerpt of my course. speech up, asked me to respond to it. So I did. The two conflicting ideas were, one, if you're in Don Lemon's headspace, civil rights are a good thing. Second Amendment rights are a bad thing. That's just an ossified worldview. And part of what I taught him, it's part of history. It's part of American history. We just got to go study it, is that Actually, the civil rights of black Americans were never secured until they actually enjoyed Second Amendment protections. In fact, part of the black codes that were passed in the Reconstruction era were designed to take guns and gun ownership rights away from black Americans. That's not an accident. The Dred Scott decision, which preceded the Civil War, Chief Justice Taney famously and ignominiously said that part of the reason black people couldn't be citizens in this country is because it would give them the right to own guns. So this is fundamental stuff, even in Supreme Court doctrine. So I was exposing that history, but that made Don Lemon's head explode because to him, Second Amendment bad, civil rights good, and I'm committing some sort of cardinal sin by mixing the two together when it's mm. just a fact of history that actually one was fundamental to securing the other. And, so and the audience should know that I Vivek think, went to, in addition to his success on Wall Street and so on, uh, went to Yale Law School. I mean, he graduated from Yale Law School. So you, you know the law. You were prepared for a de debate or a discussion on that. But the irony is, if he actually s expected you to cede the arguments to him because he's a black man and you're not, he shouldn't have had you on the show. He should have just looked into the camera and offered his own opinions on all these matters. Going to bed at a decent hour did not always mean I got enough sleep. Often I was too hot or too cold or just not that comfortable. That changed with my Cozy Earth bedding, the softest, most luxurious, and responsibly sourced bedding on the planet. Cozy Earth bedding is naturally temperature regulating, so I sleep great in any weather. And I am not alone. Allison leaves this five-star review. Love them. Softest, most comfortable sheets I've ever slept on. Cozy Earth bedding is made from 100% premium viscose from bamboo. Cozy Earth is so confident you will love their products, they offer a 100-night sleep trial which means you have up to 100 nights to sleep on it, wash it, try it out. If you're not completely in love, just send it back in for a full refund. Whether it's their luxury sheets, their loungewear, their pajamas, or their new bath towel collection, you're going to love shopping at Cozy Earth. And now you can order their bedding in five awesome colors. Hurry, save 35% on Cozy Earth. Go to CozyEarth.com, enter my promo code MEGAN, and save that 35%. CozyEarth.com, promo code M-E-G-Y-N. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.